Well, I talked about doing this video for a while, and now it's time to do it. The whole idea that professional wrestling seems to have adopted of wrestlers needing to get their wins back or trading off wins and losses and how that is a determining factor in deciding and who goes over in matches. And personally, I am not a fan of this concept. I don't like this idea. I think it causes several problems with the booking. Um, and I think it harms characters in the long run. Uh, it, it just creates so many different problems and uh, logical issues in writing a wrestling show. Um, and I just, I've never liked that idea of, oh, well, I won this match, so I have to win the next one, and then we'll just trade off wins and losses. Or, well, this guy lost last month, and he can't lose two months in a row, so we got to have him go over this month, or, or whatever. Um, whatever stupid reasons they come up with to justify somebody going over. And to me, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do it that way for several reasons. Um, personally, I've always believed that the deciding factor in who should go over in a match should be, okay, what story is the best story to tell from the result? Um, if we have the heel go over here, uh, would it add a lot of heat to the heel? Would it be able to drive storylines for another three or four or five months? Uh, to eventually set him up for his eventual fall, or would it be a good way to set up that heel for world title contendership if he isn't already the world champion, uh, and put him on a momentum run that would eventually build him up to that point? Or would having the heel go over ruin the baby face and, uh, you know, kind of ruin a big payoff and uh, ultimately hurt a baby face character in the long run? Those are the factors that should be discussed in who or what goes over, and not necessarily like, oh, well, this guy won last month, so he has to lose this month, and, and vice versa. That logic doesn't really make sense. Uh, the two main reasons that I really don't like this idea. Number one, it makes uh, match outcomes predictable. I looked at the card for Extreme Rules, um, and there were eight matches on that card. I got seven of them right as far as picking a winner, and a lot of it had to do with some very, uh, pre you know, the, kind of that whole thing. It's like, well, Lesnar lost at WrestleMania, a match that he shouldn't have lost. I felt like it would have been beneficial in the long run to have Lesnar end Triple H's career, give him the heat that goes along with that, and then eventually set him up down the road to lose to somebody else. Um, they opted not to do that because Triple H lost at SummerSlam. So Triple H needs to get his win back here, and then we need to put the heat back on Lesnar so he has to win at Extreme Rules. So I, I kind of figured that that's what they were doing, even though the Extreme Rules match was less meaningful, so it didn't really add as much heat to Lesnar as it should have. But w whatever. I mean, that's, again, that's a perfect example of it. Um, it just creates a whole lot of predictability in that type of booking, and uh, that's how I was able to guess so many of them. The only one that I got wrong was Sheamus and Mark Henry, and that's only because I figured Mark Henry is one of the few monster heels that they <laughs> seem to dedicate any t type of attention to. So I figured uh, Mark Henry would get another win. Uh, of course, um, even that match, it was a tough pick because he was going up against Sheamus, who was one of their golden boys. So... Uh, even that one was tough, but a lot of the other ones, you just kind of go, eh, you know, you kind of, you can kind of figure it out. And you know, the Shield matches were obvious just because it's the Shield. And again, there are two guys, or three guys that are, um, you know, they actually are giving them a string of wins one after the other to make them look dominant. But uh, some of the other ones, you know, the Lesnar Triple H one is a great example. I knew that Cena wasn't going to lose the title because he just won it a month ago. Um, I, and I figured that the draw was a possibility, so, you know, okay. Um, y you know, a, a lot of that stuff goes on. I, I knew that Del Rio, well, he just lost the title, so he's not going to lose at the pay-per-view to Jack Swagger right away. So, again, th there you go. A lot of, uh, that type of logic coming into play. Um, and it, like I said, it creates a lot of predictable booking, and, um... You know, you'll see some feuds go on for four or five months where they just rotate uh, wins and losses back and forth to each other. Um, I, I think the CM Punk Rey Mysterio feud was one of those examples where they, I think they had three pay per view matches. And it was pretty much just, okay, CM Punk has control going into WrestleMania, so Rey wins at WrestleMania. Then, because Rey won at WrestleMania, Punk has to win the next month. 
And then because Punk won that month, Punk, uh, Ray has to win the final match in the feud because that's how it all works out. Um, and I felt like, personally, the way the storyline had gone, is like, shouldn't Punk win at WrestleMania since the stipulation is that if he wins, Ray has to join the Straight Edge Society? Wouldn't that make more sense? Because you can get a lot more out of that story than you can out of just having Ray win. Um, and you could probably get about six months out of that and then do the rematch at SummerSlam, you know, months and months down the road where Ray wins back his freedom. That's probably what I would do. And do something in between where Ray is working for the Straight Edge Society, but he, you know, disobeys and he costs Punk the world title or something like that. And that'll be your build up into SummerSlam where Ray, they have like a ladder match with Ray's contract on the line or something like that. That to me would be a lot more interesting than just doing the rotating wins idea that they did. And it isn't even just rotating wins in feuds. Like, the whole justification for John Cena beating Brock Lesnar last year at Extreme Rules, which pretty much almost everybody agrees was a dumb decision. Uh, I, I'm going to say at least 90% of the fans agree, and the critics think, is like, yeah, that was pretty stupid. The justification for it was, well, Cena lost at WrestleMania against The Rock, so he can't lose two months in a row. Why not? Especially since the storyline down the road was that 2012 was the worst year of John Cena's career, so wouldn't a loss to Lesnar only enhance that? It's like, well, he's going to lose to Johnny Ace the next month, so we can't have him lose three pay-per-views in a row. Why does the Johnny Ace match need to happen in the first place? And then, because he lost to Johnny Ace, it's like, well, we can't have him lose to Big Show, even though we're pushing Big Show as a monster heel. And that type of predictability is just really, really annoying. And, uh, and even, not even with just matches, but just the way things play out on TV, it's like, well, if the heel gained the advantage on TV, then I know he's going to lose at the pay-per-view. And that can get really, really, really boring and really repetitive and really uh, predictable. And it, leaves to, it, leads, it lends itself to a lot of formulaic, uncreative booking. And I really don't like that. And another aspect I don't like, and I kind of touched up on this, it makes it very hard for characters to build momentum if you do that. If you constantly, if everybody has to be 50-50 and everybody's trading wins, it makes it very hard for somebody to really gain momentum and really be pushed up to that level. I'll go back to Big Show. Big Show's a perfect example. One of the reasons he has never worked as a monster is that he loses all the time. He'll win one match. He might win a couple squash matches on TV, and then ultimately he'll lose and lose all that momentum. And that's why Big Show has never really uh, been that well booked as a monster because they never dedicate themselves to it because he can't uh, he can't win more than one match in a row, and that's just annoying and it's it's bullshit, quite honestly. One of the reasons that the Undertaker Kane feud was so great is that Kane was un beatable heading into WrestleMania 14. And Undertaker already has years and years of built-in credibility going into that match anyway. Um, so that's why that match worked so well, because Kane was a legitimate threat against to, to the Undertaker. If they had done the feud the way they do things now, where they would have had Kane... You know, he would have lost to Cena, he would have lost to Sheamus, he probably would have won a couple matches in between. It would have been very, you know, tit-for-tat... Uh, type of booking, and then by the time he gets The Undertaker at WrestleMania, it doesn't mean as much because the whole Kane as a monster image has been destroyed. Um, you know, things like that. It, it, the type of the 50 50 booking makes it very hard for somebody to really gain any kind of tangible or meaningful momentum, and that's another reason why I really don't like it. And again, you think back to it, you know, real sports don't work that way. Movies and television shows typically don't work that way. They don't operate under the mentality that it's like, oh, well, the protagonist, you know, uh, won this fight, so, or he lost this fight, so he's got to win the next one or whatever. Um, you know, basically, The Empire Strikes Back, the rebels do nothing but lose. They get their asses kicked at Hoth. <laughs> um, uh, and then everything ends shittily for them at the end. They don't operate, that movie doesn't operate under the assumption of, well, Hoth didn't go so well, but Luke has to beat Vader at the end of the movie. They didn't use that. Uh, they, they realized that Empire's the middle chapter and the heels, you know, and you, I'm going to use wrestling terminology in Star Wars because fuck it. Um, you know, so it's got to be, um, the, the heels have to build their heat. Uh, throughout the course of the middle chapter 
So basically, the bad guys do nothing but win, and that's basically Empire Strikes Back. It's just they might as well just rename that movie "The Bad Guys Win." <laughs> that's all that movie is about, and it's really all about us uh, setting it up for the good guys to ultimately get their win at the end of Jedi. Um, patience, you know, long-term planning. It isn't just that instant gratification thing. It's like, oh, it's okay, it's okay that Cena lost. He's gonna win the next one. It's okay. It, it, you know, it's gonna be all right. He's gonna win it, it win next week anyway. So it, it's okay. Don't cry, kitties. Um, and, and that type of booking, I don't think lends itself to much long-term planning or long-term satisfying payoffs. I think it's just, um, it, first of all, doing so many rematches in a row to begin with, I think is oversaturation. I think if, if you have a really hot feud, um, um, where you got a really big match out of it, I think rematch, the rematch should be sh saved for a few months down the road. I don't, I really don't like this idea of doing the rematches on top of each other one after the other because I think it just gets repetitive and stale and wears out the appeal of that major match that you had when you could probably get uh, do the big match once and then save it for a year or not years but months down the road later to get another big one uh, just to build up anticipation for a rematch instead they just kind of pile them on one on top of the other and it gets boring and stale but whatever, even if the matches are really good like Orton and Christian nobody said their matches were bad I didn't hear anybody say their matches were bad, but nobody gave a shit because they did it straight for four months and you got like 12 matches and by the end of it, nobody gave a shit anymore. Um, I, the matches were good. AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels, the matches were good, but I saw it 800 times. I don't need to see it anymore. Um, but those are the reasons why I'm not a fan of that whole 50-50 booking, you know, I win, you win, uh, style of booking, you know, who wins and who loses. I don't think it works. I don't think it, uh, like I said, I think it hurts long-term planning, it hurts long-term storylines, uh, it hurts character momentums, um, and there's really no reason to do it. I don't even understand why they do it, unless it's pro uh, unless it's like an ego thing where the wrestlers are like, well, I can't lose, or, you know, and that's what happens when, <laughs> when guys have creative control, and, and probably, I'm just speculating, I don't know, but... Um, that's my whole take on the subject, and uh, I'm sure I'll come up with other topics for next week when I do my videos. Probably have a anniversary review at some point. I might have one other topic video thrown in. Uh, but that's all I have for now, so enjoy your weekend, and peace out, everybody.